Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Yeah, one of those stayed up all night kind of nights and had quite a bit of fun, won't deny. Into the Bible, 2 Kings chapter 14. Now, here we have a king who actually lived according to the way of the Lord, minus getting rid of the high places. This is King Amaziah, and he was the king of Judah. And to back up what I just said, in verse 3 it says, And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like his father David. He did everything as his father Joash had done. However, the high places were not taken away, and the places, or I'm sorry, and the people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. So, yeah, like I just said, and then on to verse 5. Now it happened, as soon as the kingdom was established in his hand, that he executed his servants who had murdered his father, the king. His father felt plot to a conspiracy. I think, I think my English there was beautiful. Wouldn't you agree? So he had those people executed. Then verse 6, But the children of the murderers he did not execute, according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, in which the Lord commanded, saying, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall children be put to death for their fathers. But a person shall be put to death for his own sin. And it's not a surprise to anyone who reads history, and definitely not anyone who looks into the history of how monarchies, dynasties, and kingdoms usually run generally the king and his son that forms a lineage and they keep being the king until someone overthrows them whether it's another king of another kingdom or a conspirator so he became king despite his his father being overthrown by a conspirator he put the conspirators to death he did not however put to death their sons who could you know possibly take the kingdom over from him at some later date he followed the word of the lord everyone pays for their own sin yeah, you don't pay for your children's sin or your parents' sin. You pay for your own sin, which is really awesome. He followed the Lord. He did as the Lord had instructed. And then, rather unfortunately, you go down to verse, let's see, let's start at verse 18. Now, the rest of the acts of Amaziah, we're skipping ahead to the end of his life here. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And they formed, who knows who, a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent after him to Lachish and killed him there. Then they brought him on horses, and he was buried at Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. So dis despite following the word of the Lord, he fell victim to the exact same thing his father did. Now, did he do anything wrong? Um, he may have done some things wrong in his life, sure. In fact, the Bible in that chapter seems to indicate that he picked a fight he shouldn't have picked. He went to war with the king he shouldn't have went to war with, and he paid for it. He was even captured by them. But nothing indicating that he deserved what he got. And, of course, you know, you think of someone forming a conspiracy against you. Well, we did. We looked at how Jehu formed a conspiracy against the king then. That was of the Lord, and the Lord <laughs> completely backed him up on that. Nor under any other circumstance, you know, falling to a conspirator, especially if the king himself was an innocent man and hadn't done anything wrong, then yeah, that would be a very bad thing. And, just, and you know, he picked a fight where he shouldn't have. He was captured. He paid for that. He didn't need someone to come in and take his life for rebellion against the Lord or worshiping idols, or any such thing that the Old Testament would normally condemn. He followed the word of the law, and he still ended up paying the price. So, did he do the right thing? Well, we don't know who those they were. We don't know who exactly formed a conspiracy against him, but should he have wiped out their children instead just to be on the safe side? Absolutely not. He followed the word of the Lord. Just as Jehu followed the word of the Lord to rise up against the king in his time, Jehu followed the word of the Lord in not putting any of the conspirators' children to death. The important thing isn't what will secure me, what will guarantee me, what will make sure that everything of mine goes right. The question is, what has the Lord commanded? What does obedience to him look like? Not, let me make sure I get all of mine, let me just protect all my stuff and get as much power and money and security as possible and make sure that me and mine are at peace. No. The question is, what does the Lord say? What does the Lord have in mind? And Jehu, despite his end, he followed the Lord. At least for the most part. Again, he made some mistakes. 
But as far as the conspirators and their children, he followed the word of the Lord. And if, even if somehow that was wrong and he made a mistake, at the very, very least, he was obeying the heart of the law. He wanted to do what the Lord saw as right. He was trying to be obedient. And that is a beautiful thing, even when things go badly in the end. It's still a beautiful thing and a good thing to follow the Lord. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.